pleasure and pain are big issues in our lives. And they're so big, you think we would understand them better. It's because we let ourselves get pushed around by these things without really looking into them. That's why we suffer so much. And one of the reasons we don't look into them is because it's hard. Pain especially, it's hard to look at. We've been dealing with pleasure and pain ever since we were born. And a lot of the habits we learned around how we react to pleasure and pain are things that we learned before we could even talk, before we could understand anything at all. So there's a lot of ignorance here, and a lot of ignorance that we haven't explored. So meditating is basically making up our minds. We're going to try to understand these two issues, which are basically one issue, the issue of feeling. So we start out by establishing a beachhead for ourselves. In the midst of all the chaos of the world, we have our little corner here. This is what John Sawat like to call the monastery here. He's at our quiet corner. We have to make a quiet corner in the mind as well. And if you wait for the world to settle down and be a good place to live in, where everybody's fair and everybody's just, you'll never have your chance to straighten out your own mind. You'll die first. This is why you have to start here, creating this little corner and giving all your attention to this one spot where you're focusing, say, on the breath or whatever your meditation word is. The purpose of this is to create a little space at least where you feel solid, where you feel secure, where there's a sense of well-being. Do you find a spot that's relatively comfortable, and you work to make it more comfortable? You learn how to recognize when the breath is too long, when the breath is too short. Because it doesn't feel right. There's nobody out there telling you this kind of breathing is too long, or this kind of breathing is too short, or too shallow, or too deep, or whatever. You've got to notice things on your own, learn how to be sensitive just to this process of breathing, and figure out for yourself what is the sign of a long breath, a breath that's too long, or a breath that's too short. You've got to develop your own sens sensitivities. This is what insight is all about, developing your inner sensitivity to pleasure and pain. So you can detect them on a subtle level. If you wait until they're really strong, you get overwhelmed. So start on the subtle level here, just the breathing. And then when you've got this spot here that feels good, the breath comes in, it feels good, breath goes out, it feels good. You can let that sense of boundary around your little spot dissolve away. And think of the pleasure, the sense of ease spreading out from that spot, flowing along whatever channels there are in the body that pleasure can flow. Again, this is up, for, up to you to decide what works in your sense of the body. Teachers can give pointers. 
But you've got to take their pointers and put them into practice and see what works and what doesn't work for you. Again, it's a matter of developing your own sensitivity. You can't take somebody else's insights and just slap them onto your experience and claim to have wisdom. Discernment comes in three, way, three forms. There's the discernment you learn from other people, the things you hear, the things you read. It's one level. The things you think through, that's another level. And then finally, the things you learn by trying to develop mindfulness, alertness, and other good qualities of the mind. It's the third level where it really becomes your own. It's your own sensitivity telling you these things. So once you've developed a, a beachhead, once you've developed your quiet corner, work out from there. And see it how it relates to other things going on in the body. And particularly other feelings of pleasure, other feelings of pain. Some kinds of pain you can work through as you expand the sense of the comfortable breath that begins to dissolve that pain away. Or if there's this sense of tension around a sensation of pain, you can dissolve that tension away, even though the pain may stay there. Dissolving the tension around it really helps a lot, it makes it a lot easier to, to live with these things. So get as much of the body as comfortable as you can. That's when you can really look into the pains that are remaining. Because you've got your foundation, and you've been developing your sensitivity. So you begin to see which part of the pain is mental and which is physical. In other words, which part of the pain comes from actions of the mind, the way the mind reacts to the, so the raw data of physical pain, the way it puts a label on it, the way it constructs all kinds of dialogues about it. All the wild beasts in your savanna here are going to come around the pain. That little child who is always feeling wrong to the little child who feels whatever. You find that you get in touch with your inner child. It, it whines a lot. It's going to be here right at the pain. And as long as you learn not to identify with it, you learn a lot of interesting things. You sense how when this particular thought comes and surrounds the pain, it makes the pain worse. This particular thought makes it better. Okay, you see this through your own sensitivity by having a place to stand and watch. That's a place to stand where you're not totally threatened by the pain. At the same time, you learn how to deal with pleasure. It's so easy when there's a sense of pleasure in the body just to drop the breath and basically forget about your meditation and indulge in the pleasure. That's something you also have to work to overcome. It's not that you try to destroy the pleasure, it's that you learn how to be with it and how to use it and not get sucked in by it. In other words, you find that you learn how to change your relationship both to pleasure and to pain. If you approach pleasure the right way, you can use it as a foundation for stronger and stronger powers of concentration, more and more stillness. And the greater the stillness, the more sensitivity you can have, the more sensitivity you can bring to the pleasure and the pain. So in both ways, you're trying to learn how to deal with pleasure and pain and not be overwhelmed by them. To learn how to watch how your mind reacts in unskillful ways. So you can begin to unlearn a lot of those bad habits you developed way back when. And as you learn how to approach both pleasure and pain in more skillful ways, you find that it has an impact on the 
the entirety of your life, because so much of your life is driven by pleasure and pain. When you can see them more clearly and see your reactions to them more clearly, you're not driven. That means you have a wider range of choice. Or, in other words, more freedom. It all starts right here at the base of building blocks. The physical world may be made out of atoms, but the world of your experience is made out of little things like this, pleasures and pains. So use the techniques of the meditation to become more skillful in how you deal with the basic building blocks. Once the basic building blocks are well in hand, then the whole rest of your life gets well in hand. <laughs>